How you doing out there in cyberspace all around the world? This is John Wayne McCure, the Sonneteer from Chandler, Arizona. And I got a sonnet here that's important to me because I'm an old man. Old, old, old. I was born way back in, way back in the last century. And people don't care about old people. They don't understand, you know, I'm the same inside as I ever was. Inside, I'm 25 years old. And Gertrude Stein used to say that. And this sonnet that I'm writing here, number 1,199. Your life is short and so very precious. People take chances with their life. There was a guy that they had a funeral yesterday for him. And he'd been without his arms and legs for 40 years. And still he was living. Life is really precious. And it was so hard for him. I can't imagine how he suffered. And life is so precious. And it was precious for him too. Well, Robert Louis Stevenson is one of my favorite writers. Terrific, gifted, Scottish writer. The great novel Treasure Island. Every young boy dreams of that kind of adventure. What a great 1950 movie with Robert Newton as Long John Silver. Complete when he had a peg leg and a parrot on his shoulder. A real privateer, pirate. Stevenson died when he was only 44 years old. A young guy, far too young. He was born in 1850. He died in 1894. 44, too young. His story of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is scary as a movie. With Lana Turner, exotic Ingrid Bergman, and Spencer Tracy, it's a marvelous transformation of evil, Mr. Hyde. Stevenson cherished life as we all should. What a gift is life that your heart beats and doesn't take a coffee break or nothing? Stevenson writes about dwindling time left in which there is to live. Our life is so short. He says, even if the doctor will only give you a single year, see how much you can accomplish. Even if he hesitates to give you a month, Make a courageous resolution to see how much you can achieve in just a week, a day, an hour. Go, go, go. Busy as you can. Make something of your later days. People take their lives for granted, thinking they are immortal. Everybody thinks they're going to live to be old, old, old. But I look at the obituaries every day, and if my name isn't in there, I get up. There's a lot of young people in the obituaries and, and their life is over. They think they're immortal and they're not. Blissful youth, you never think of dying. Life to you will go on forever. Writer Gertrude Stein in Paris, she said, We're always the same age inside. Like I said, inside I'm 25. I mean, the body's wearing out. Can't help that. I'm an old coot now. I'm an old codger. I'm one of them old guys, you know, they talk too slow, they, they, they act too slow, they drive too slow. Why don't you just get out of the way, die or something? Well, we're always the same age inside, and I'm 25. After our bodies get old and decrepit, our true age, we do deny, we don't want to even admit we're old. The mind itself is forever young and alert, unless you get Alzheimer's or things like that. Despite very, very high mileage, your mind is still adept. I try to learn something new every day. Seeing young folks disrespecting the elders. The elders, when you're looking at an old person, you're seeing a survivor. They survived a lot to get to be old. And you don't understand that. Why? Because you're young and uh, silly. 50, they say, is the youth of old age. You wake up and everything hurts. Everything is pain. Creaky fingers. Arthritis, crippling knees, backs hurting, hips complaining. When you look at an old person, what you see, what you see, really, I'm going to remind you again, an old person is a true survivor. The random studying of those obituaries, death is always the victor. It's always going to happen. Hey, you can't get out of it. We're going to die, but don't ever fear death. A friend death itself, which leads you on to paradise. And you say, I don't believe that. Well, then don't, don't. But you're not risking anything to believe the promise. And I believe the promise that the Lord has said 
that it's going to be a paradise. Won't fearing death cloud your days? Life itself with worth the price of whatever you had to pay. I know everybody has a cross to bear, but life is so beautiful. Look around you. Everything is a miracle. It's gorgeous living this life. And God, the Lord, let me see it. It is, it is my honor and my privilege to have savored my life. Every moment has been precious to me. And you can't be worried about dying. Just think about wonderful, happy moments that have been in your life. We all have them. Those happy moments are worth it all. They're worth it all. Trust in God. He will meet you in heaven's wonderful afterlife. One of my favorite Romans is Marcus Aurelius. His meditations 2,000 years ago exhorts you. He tells you to favor each day as a life in itself, a beginning and ending at night. Each morning when you wake up again will be a welcome gift on heaven's pathway. Speaking as scripture, in the scriptures, each day is sufficient to its own, its own troubles, its own goods, its own evil. And you've got to understand that, hey, people worry about tomorrow. you got to worry about the past. No, 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 that's done. That's gone. The only thing that matters is the present, the moment. Cherish the moment. Our life is short. And so very precious. And if you're not valuing your life, I see these people speeding with motorcycles and, and doing these this crazy stunts that endanger their life. It's not worth 50 years of your life to leave people you love. It's like Clint Eastwood says, you know, uh, you, you kill somebody. I mean, you're killing yourself. You take away not only th everything they have, but everything they're ever going to have. You're losing your life 50 years too soon. you got to be a little more cautious. No sudden moves. This is John Wayne Mercure, the sonneteer. Ja'Allah pour vous. Et te mec qui vous aime. Thank you for listening. Au revoir.